going to record. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the second call for 2020. Very excited. Those of you in the group who got to see the first week, um, if you're just jumping into this one and you're, you're watching the replay or whatever, don't stress. Um, as you guys know, the, the Facebook group is set out in a way that has modules that you can slowly work your way through. Um, and after this one, I will actually take the link of this. Each week, it will go into the Facebook group and you can see the recording live, um, the live recording. But I will also be creating a library where you can just go directly to and see the replay on all of the calls. Angela, I'm still trying to figure a way that you may be able to access these um, without them being on, um, because you're not on social media. So I'm, I'm trying to find a way. I may actually even download all of these and put them into um, YouTube so I can send you the direct links to be able to access that. Or oh, we might wow, just have you set up with a Facebook group so that you can um, start using it. <laughs> <laughs> And so this this session is uh, when every other every fortnight on Mondays at twelve thirty Queensland time, and we've got Shanae's in South Australia and Katie is in New South Wales. So we've got all over Australia. We've actually today got all over the world. Well, I don't know what a fortnight is. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, every two weeks, every other week. You're correct. Okay. At four thirty in the afternoon on Tuesday. What is it there today? I don't know. What's your oh, date? Here? Yeah. Here it's, sun here it's Sunday. Okay. So whatever time it is right now, it's every two weeks. Okay. Amazing. So Katie, I was just saying to the girls that we've had, um, both the other girls have had shifts in their health types um, when their bodies transmuted and changed. Um, Shanae has moved from a sensor into a diplomat. And Angela was actually, um, we started working together back when they did a change in the algorithm because as we put more and more human bodies into the AI, it develops, it notices more and more trends and there will be developments over the years where they will change the algorithm and things might shift for you. I myself have moved from a 305 diplomat to a 300 diplomat. So I've brought, it means I'm noticing a few more um uh, I'm noticing trends towards sensor a little bit more. I've got a little bit more of an ectomorphic brain going on at the moment, uh, which makes a lot of sense for me shifting into the 300 phase. Um, but Shanae has moved from sensor into just into diplomat because her body's, you know, holding some weight at the moment, really feeling into what's going on as the hormones are rebalancing and the, and, and, and the fluids are rebalancing just to find its new equilibrium. And, uh, and Katie, I'd love to hear, have you, how's your big wins? We were just chatting on the phone just before, and I would love to start the floor off with a bit more of our conversation you and I were having before. Would you feel comfortable in expressing that? Sure, sure. I've got my timings all wrong, so I'm in, in a shop, but um, let's chat. Oh, I love doing in the shop chats. That's good for you. Far away. What, what, where do you want to start? Okay, so what's coming up for you this week? Oh, this past week. So I just really tried to refine my food choices. And every time I do go to maybe eat something out of habit, I just check where it comes on my food list, whether it's, you know, good, bad or indifferent. And mm -hmm. today I grabbed a mango and quickly discovered that that's really poor for me at the moment. So... It was good I did, and fortunately I had kiwi fruit, which I had plenty of as well. So um, it's just good really tapping into that. And I think, you know, I like the reminders that I get um, just to slow down and exercise. I probably haven't been really this week. My exercise really entailed one outing um, that was consciously exercising, whereas I'd like that to be more like a daily habit. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, when Katie rang me earlier today to discuss this, I said that it's really important for the diplomats and guardians. If we do something like that, where we buy something and then we, we realise that it's not the greatest choice for us, it's really important not to go into any kind of scarcity or judgment, but also to make sure um, when that happens, a really good idea would be to freeze the mangoes, right? Because 
everything is not forever in our face, in our profile. It will shift and change as our body develops and, 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 and becomes more balanced. And as the seasons go, different fruits and vegetables will come and go out of our list. And so things like the mango, you can freeze it and still have it for three to six months and, and know that it's not going to go to waste. And that's really, really important for our endomorph brains is because it, it, if we didn't do that, it would then cause um, anxiety and stress and guilt, which then snowballs us and rocks us off of our little balancing point. And then that can lead to us then slipping up later and having an extra um, extra serving of a, of a sweet thing or um, reaching for the fatty foods to try and create that heavy, safe feeling. Um, so that's really awesome, Katie. And the other one what about the exercise. Um, how do you think you'd be able to structure your week? Like, what do you think got in the way of you being able to do the ex exercise? Was it just life? Being well, I think the big, I think the thing is I've just got to try and find that hour after work mm. um, and just be organized. I think a big part of this program is organization, mm. it's preparation, planning. So if I've got my kit with me, and I've planned it in, I'm pretty committed. Whereas if I don't, I think, oh, I'll do that when I get home. Well, I don't. I get distracted and it doesn't happen. Mm. So it becomes the, the diplomat contingency plan of, all right, I always have my gym bag in the car with me and I always have my bottles of water with me and I always have my food prepped and planned because without that planning, you know, the ship's leaving the harbour with no idea where the heck it's stopping and where its pit stops are and what's expected of it on the journey. It's naturally going to start this stress hormone of unpredictability. And then that then starts triggering our food responses and our emotional responses to our portion sizes. So it all just snowballs. Um, and that's perfect. That, I mean, you have described me just in that one <laughs> statement to a T because my biggest... Thing, and you know we've all got you know other people family members partners that may be different and my biggest thing is things aren't planned and I feel in a constant state of stress because of it mm -hmm. that mm. unpredictability that unknown is just sending constant I would just call them shock waves through my whole being oh, I hate it that's huge that's absolutely huge and I think um a lot of endomorphs because we feel this obligation to everyone. Does everybody, would everyone agree you feel this obligation to the kids, the family, to what you should be getting done in our day? Yeah. And, and that's like this, this raging beast that if you, if you put your feet on the ground and step out of your bed, it's like one of these big punching things that comes in and knocks you back into bed. Because if you don't take that moment before you get out of bed or before you get into life and rebalance ourselves, and just, I, I think diplomats, it's really awesome to have a set of headphones beside the bed with your mobile phone. Um, and it's the only reason why I would say this is the fact that if you sit there and force yourself to meditate for 10 minutes and clear the slate and stop the monkey mind from jumping into autopilot, you will end up being so reactive in your day and having a notepad by your bed because would everyone agree that as that's happening, you have every thought in the world of everything that needs to happen that you haven't done yet pop into your head? Yeah. Yeah, and it's super important. If we can just grab that monkey mind and know that it's always going to be there, you have to reformulate a new relationship, right? Because you know what's going to happen. It's like um, uh, there's so many scenarios I could use, but if you were to know that your partner will always leave his coffee cup beside the sink and not in the sink and rinse, right? It's actually, he's okay with it being there. It's just you that has the problem with the coffee cup being there. It's not actually hurting anybody, but you know that coffee cup is always going to be there. So it's your choice as to whether or not you make that a problem or you just accept it's going to be there and that he will put it away eventually. So it's us really stepping in and knowing that we are very, very, very easy to jump into this action of, this is happening. Now I'm in a stress state and, and life, I mean, it's always going to happen. So we have to be there and go, right, the only thing I can focus on is my participation, my thoughts and my emotions that I connect to everything that's going on around me. So how can I make sure that I get that first, fill my cup first and clear out the, the noise with meditation um, and then come back mm. to it? Mm. Does anybody really struggle with meditation first thing in the morning? I haven't been doing it. Cool. So I need to do out. that. And 
I think I need to do that and I need to have a notepad because I wake up a lot through the night. I have a notepad. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I do wake up a lot and I do get my, my mind races away with all sorts of things. And it will. And it's, it, becomes, um, it becomes this unconscious addiction. We actually have this unconscious addiction to being in a stress state because that's how all of us have lived the last, potentially the last 10 to 15 years is we've all lived in this stress state of I've got kids, I've got this, I've got that, I've got to get all the things done. There's no time for me, which is bullshit because you do have the time. You just have to make it. We have to prioritize that choice to put ourselves first because ultimately if we don't, then we're constantly reacting to everything and then you know, at the end of the day, you realise instead of having my, my lunch and my apple, I've then gone to the shop and grabbed a donut and a, and a, a raw treat and a, a milkshake and, and something I've had 10 times more than I should, was meant to eat. But that's because I've been unconscious and reacting rather than taking the time to structure your day, do your meditation. And as you're going into your meditation, your first three to five minutes, I will always have a piece of paper beside the bed while I'm meditating. And I guarantee you, I have three to five minutes where everything that I need to get done will pop into my head. And I just allow myself to spend the first three to five minutes of my meditation, just jotting it all down when it comes up. And then I will quickly fall into a very, very deep meditation. It's taken me three years of meditating and practicing to get that to happen. And it had to start out with a three minute meditation. Have any of you ever heard of the fuck it meditation? Oh, guaranteed it is the funniest yet most effective transmutation meditation I've ever come across. And it's like, it's literally, it's like this thing goes, now breathe in and let it out. Fuck this shit. And it's like, breathe in. Just know that everyone's still going to be a fuckwit after this session. (sighs) But this is my three minutes to get rid of this emotion ah, and it just pulls you out of any anxiety and any stress and you just get that that moment of going oh yeah right right i've got this like i get it um and i used to use that little three minute meditation and then i would pop into a 10 minute meditation that would really drop me into that space really effectively but it is a free 13 minutes of my life that i deserve and it's doable and it's the only time you'll ever hear me say, wake up a bit earlier to get it done. Because 10 to 15 yeah, can minutes. You, can, you share, can you share your links on that, those meditations? I do remember once before on a retreat, um, Shana, you gave me a link to something that was pretty, was pretty so central. Yeah. But it was good. It was good. It was one of my favorites. So, mm. yes, please. My pleasure. My pleasure. That's a beautiful share. So um, anything else come up about that for anyone else? Yeah. Um, are you saying that the first 10 minutes, uh, that, that this meditation should be your planning? Or... For diplomats, it can be because we have this reptilian monkey mind that as soon as we are char- trying to, and this is for the less advanced, like you've been meditating successfully for such a long time, Angela. So some parts of this may be relevant to you, at times because you've gone from being a diplomat where you were told to be really slow and in flow where in actual fact you're an activator so a meditation yeah, yeah i jump up i jump up and um i i get my water and and then i go into something um like my five rights or my qigong and I use that at the same time as almost a movement meditation. I yeah. use it as a, mind, a mind, mindful meditation. So while I'm doing the Qigong or the Five Rites, which are in meditative, um, that's, that's a, um, an, I don't want to use the word escape, but a, you know, a, a back off and just chill out for the day and I try not to think, not to Mm -hmm. think about my planning and not to think, you know, I do, I do that the night before I do that in the evening, Mm -hmm. like this Mm -hmm. time it's night here. So well, that's definitely the best way to do it is to do it in the evening before we go to bed, because a lot of us can then struggle to go to sleep. So it really is one of those ones, morning time or night time, whatever works best for you. Um, but I know that I can plan the night before and still wake up the next day and have things pop into my head. It's like during the night, 
all the everything went quiet and my body suddenly woke up and went oh and also and don't forget and while we're there and blah and you're kind of going oh come on like can't i just have a minute rest <laughs> yes the 10 minute rest that i'm taking twice a day um that's basically a, a mindful meditation too it's just being in the moment it's just being there being in the moment i have music for that There's that's good just... and there, there are actually walking meditations that you can get on youtube that while you're walking it's just you and me being a diplomat with an activator energy um, for me, there's quite a few times when I used to be in high anxiety that I would use the walking meditation because actually when your body is crossing energy, so one foot forward, one arm forward, and then it changes, we go to the other arm. So when you're in that walking flow, you actually have all of your internal wiring firing in its best aspects. So um, if you're a diplomat or a, an activator, there's a lot of health types when they're in a state of anxiety. Sometimes that movement can actually be the way of transmuting the anxiety through the body and allowing you to actually process it and funnel that energy. Because quite often, if you're a diplomat in anxiety, you're in your head too much and you need to move to be able to step out of the space of stressing. But if you're an activator, it's actually the fact that you've just got pent up energy that's not being expressed. Yeah. So can you see yeah. how it's the same activity for different benefit for the different body? Yeah. Whereas Katie, Katie's actually a guardian, but she has a lot of connector in her. So for Katie, I would say your meditation would be dance or play or something fun where you are, you will, you will process as you're doing the fun thing. But if you sit and you spend too much time focusing on thoughts and feelings, you will actually end up in a dark cloud of thought and emotion. That's totally not necessary. You'd actually just better to just move and transmute it effectively. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Uh, Shanae, is there anything coming up for you this week that you is of interest in and thought? Yeah. So I obviously find it really hard to meditate in the morning with the kids because that's my, I've got to get ready for work, got to get them out the door for school. So I find it really hard to meditate first thing in the morning. I do take about a 20 minute shower and I just decompress because obviously the kids don't come into the shower with me. So I just, I sit there, I sit in the hot water and just think. Mm. Um, but I do, when I do my yoga, that obviously helps me relax. And then I'll lay there for about 10 to 15 minutes afterwards. And then obviously before I go to bed, I sit there and do my meditation and relax because I have severe anxiety. So I need that at bedtime to calm my mind and stop all that outside negativity and all the thoughts going through my head. So I get a better sleep. Otherwise, I don't sleep at all. So, mm. yeah. That's incredible. That's um, that's really interesting, guys, because, like, Sinead is so close to a sensor. Her evening time and getting in and doing her, her yoga in the evening brings her spine into alignment. And, and because ectomorphs are so brain-driven and you guys run on your central nervous system, that flexibility and movement and flowing of energy through the through the cerebral cortex is actually your best way of you're right removing the stuck energy and coming out of the mind as well um and it's really important for our endo our ectomorph brains to to have that so you've absolutely nailed that perfectly and this week you were looking i said for everyone to have a look at their week one priority of their app angela if you want to grab your phone while i've got one of the other girls talking for an activator, your top priority is, what's my mind saying again? Uh, fitness. So is there any statement in the app, in your fitness section, that you may have any query, qualm or thought or appreciation about? i just getting everyone to go into their first priority. So for um, activators, it's free, fitness is your first priority, then your food. For diplomats, it's environment, then talents. For um, sensors, it's mind and then place. And because Shanae has now jumped from sensor into diplomat, I've asked her this week to have a look at her place section. And Katie, because you are a diplomat as well, yours would be your environment. So have a look at your statements in there um, and let me know if there's anything in particular that stands out for you, whether it be positive or negative, and let's just discuss what that might actually look like or mean. Now, where did you come up with that, that this is week one? What, week, week um, one? I break I these guys. 
I break these guys into like an online component where one week they're only going to focus, or it's actually now two weeks, oh. they're only going to focus on their that that oh. priority in in order okay. of the six priorities. It's not on my no my profile. Oh, okay. It's an okay. added um, Shana Malistic profile thing. <laughs> So what well, do I need to go over, Shana? So, Katie, in your place section of your profile, is there any statement in there that particularly... Places. Place. Yeah. Or environment, yeah, okay. place. Shanae, any of the statements come up for you that were of any particular conver conversive... Yeah, what? so obviously the first one is about um, living city versus country obviously for me it's better to live in a quieter environment not be in the city so much which i'm out of the city so i absolutely can 100 percent go with this mm -hmm. um i don't like the city obviously being raised in the country i loved that moved to the city hated it mm -hmm. and then we moved out to Anglevale about four years ago and i just love it because it's so serene it's so relaxing everything's about two minutes away in the car. Like it's just, it's not the full on traffic, the full on busy go, go, go that the city has. So I really connect with that one. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, obviously going down and it says about vacationing in mountains and stuff like that. I shouldn't do it. I hate that. It's cold. I don't like it. So it says like warm and humid areas. So to me, that's coming to Queensland. <laughs> yeah, I love coming to Queensland for my holidays. So for me, I find all of that's really like relative of me and what I like and enjoy. Mm. So if someone was to say to you they wanted to go somewhere that was like a, a mountainous area that's quite cool um, and they were like, no, we really want to go, it'd probably be like a cool tactic to be like, okay, let's go there in their summer. Yeah. So that it's a warmer version of that atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't go if it's cold because I hate being cold and, yeah, it's mm. just not enjoyable for me. I don't like anything under 30 degrees. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'm sitting here in shorts and seeing it going, oh, it's really hot. <laughs> it's 35 degrees the whole weekend in the Riverland. It was perfect. Oh, weirdos. <laughs> I don't miss being down in South Australia at all. Angela, so South Australia is the dry heat and Queensland is the humid heat. And I actually prefer the humid heat over the dry heat any day. Yeah, I can't do humid. Really? Oh, not me. No. No, Medellin is no humidity and hot. I love it. Mm, you do well. If you come to Australia, you do well in the southern parts. <laughs> it's expensive to live there. Rent, you're looking at about, oh. South Australia is getting expensive. Yeah? Yeah. We're at about 500 a week for rent these days. Yeah. Yeah. 500 a week? Yep. A week? A week for rent, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's 2000 a month? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's expensive. Plus all your bills on top as well. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think you're roughly looking at about, oh like five thousand dollars a month for a general lifestyle living expensive yeah yeah and it's, it's quite interesting because you have such an endo that you there are parts of your brain angela that are very endomorphic and the fact that you your question of that like um for the other ladies like when angela and i have been doing sessions like she's always got to know the why on everything so she has a very amazing like in the moment <laughs> wants to know every aspect of it all which is wonderful but um there's a very mesomorph endomorph i say ectomorph kind of wanting to know why um on everything which is cool because that's the way your brain works which forces someone like me to go back into the why a bit more but i love that you brought up the financial as your first point of question on that because that's your endomorph brain like endomorphs need to have financial security, uh, environmental security, um, family security, those things are really, really important. I think Katie would be the one that would agree with this the absolute most, is that when all those three things, if any of those three things are in, in jeopardy, the endomorphs will hold weight because they don't feel safe because some part of their community is being affected. Um, and Katie, because you're such a cusp of guardian diplomat, you still have... Um, 
a lot of that society social aspect that needs to be safe would that mm, be right definitely mm. yeah for sure and so katie with your week one priority being environment how are you going with your environment at home did you manage to get through those boxes and things that needed to be packed up and cleaned away yeah we're doing that this weekend that's sort of been a big part of that so it, it, it's, it needs a lot of attention. Um, I unpacked a box yesterday. I'd written a little note in it that I packed it in June 2010. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. <laughs> That's ay, a lot of energy to hold on to. It's, like, far out. Mm. Um, I'm, yeah. So it's... It's also discovering boxes that were, you know, my husband's first wife passed on and his two sons and, you know, things that should never have come to Australia have energetically arrived in my, my house. Mm. And I'm like, I left all that behind in England, I so thought. So. Yeah. Wow. You've, you've done Getting so well there. to hold yourself together with all of that. That's a lot of emotion to unpack. That's a lot of your, your core fundamental energies right there as a guardian diplomat, honey. You are doing so well. You are. And I know that that hurts a lot. And I know that this purging is going to be an opportunity for you to let, release so much energy in you, in your relationship, with your children, with, with everything. This is, this is huge. Don't take this. I know you're not taking this lightly. No. And you have the most beautiful capacity to really, really honour yourself through this process. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm doing it. Oh, Katie. I'm just grateful for you. Oh. I want you to make sure that through this process you love yourself no matter what and know that whatever emotions come up, it's it, it'd be... I know you might, you're you very time poor at the moment and I respect that, but it would be a wonderful practice to be aware of just some of the emotions that come up through your day and seeing whether there's any triggers that come up because you are, and I, there's to be no judgment. If you go, you know what, at two o'clock, I was okay, but then 2.30, I saw a box and then I decided to eat a block of chocolate. I want you to be okay with it and I want there to be no judgment for the next two weeks. I want you to have no judgment about anything you eat and do. I just want you to be aware because you are doing a lot of work right now and it's going to move a lot of energy. And if we judge any of that, that will create such a negative force. And all you need to do right now is love every part of you, every emotion, whether it be good, bad, whether it be raging, whether it be bawling and sit in it. Don't, when you notice it come up and you reach for the food or the coffee or the alcohol or whatever it might be, don't make it wrong, but just know that sometimes if we can count to like 30 in those moments, we can actually see the emotion that's really sitting there and it's going to feel hard. Like you're going to want to punch or cry or scream. But I guarantee you, these are the cycles for all of you, for everyone on the call, is these are the cycles that we get into. For me, it's, it's at nighttime when I feel lonely. I want to eat food. When I've given my energy to everyone every day, I want to eat the sugar and I want to have chips and crunchy things and then finish it off with something sweet. But I know that if I can push through that, the emotion will hit me and it will not be comfortable. But... That's why we reach to the food and the alcohol is to make ourselves stop feeling that feeling so that we can feel safe again. And that heavy feeling for all of us on this call, that heavy feeling feels safe, right? When you have a big cup of tea or a big stew or a big porridge or those feelings are really nurturing. But it's our reptilian mm. brain not allowing us to actually experience that death-like emotion because it's what it feels like, right? It's to our, to our heart, to our stomach. It feels like death because it's this big, there's like an avalanche of emotions sitting there and it's very easy for us to suppress that and just continue. But the problem is, is everything that continues to suppress eventually gets to the point where that, aval uh, that a volcano erupts. And that's what I really want you guys to be aware mm. of in this program is that volcano is forever sitting there. And if we're not careful, it erupts mm. and it leads to 
mum going into hospital because she's, you know, having fibromyalgia or mum going into hospital because she's got anxiety or mum snapping and throwing the coffee cup across the room because the kids just walked in and said the wrong thing at the wrong time. Like those are the things, these are the emotions and the situations that create or enable us to up level. And, and we are emotional women in the group. You are emotional beings and you have to have the process of the emotions. You have to cry. Like, I'm not perfect either. I'm a human having this human experience as well. And I know that with, um, for instance, like my relationship breaking down, I know I haven't fully allowed myself to sit here and cry about it. But that's my task is this week is kind of getting to that point. And um, I saw with a friend of mine of late talking at this exact topic. And she said she fakes it until she makes it with her emotions. So she forces herself to feel the feeling and fully transmute it. So for instance, with, with my relationship breakdown, I need to sit there probably with a photo and go through my messages with him and bring that feeling up. And even if I have to sit there and, and force the cry, like, and be like, Oh, like it's, Oh, I'm angry. And Oh, I feel really sad. And I just, I know that I need to sit there and force that emotion right now to bring me into that state very hard and fast because I know that if I don't, I'm going to continue to crave the sugar at two o'clock. I'm going to continue to crave staying up stupidly late watching TV. I'm going to crave all these poor behaviors because I'm not allowing myself to sit in the emotion and fully feel that horrible feeling because it's testing me. It's there for a reason. Would you all agree that everything that happens happens for a reason for you to transmute and grow and become something more? Nothing is ever given to you that you're not capable of dealing with. That, does that sort of resonate? Yeah. Also the, the grabbing of the, uh, the grabbing of the food. Um, part of that is because for me, at least because I'm so lax on the planning and the preparation and having things pre-made and, you know, so I can grab, um, you know, something, I can grab something that is ready rather than something that's good for me and ready. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a big thing, actually. Um, a lot of ectomorphs will have empty fridges. A lot of mesomorphs, so that's you, Angela, will have sometimes empty fridges because you're too busy doing things rather than planning it. And endomorphs like Katie and, and Shanae, you guys will often be too busy giving and doing for everyone and doing all the things to stop and plan it for yourself. But we have, do you, would you look in your cupboards and say your cupboards are empty or full? Full, very full. My refrigerator full. is always very full. Shanae? Mine are very full. Yeah. yeah. So that's an emotional trigger right there. You haven't done the planning and yet you've got a shit ton of food sitting there that you haven't used. It's actually an <laughs> yeah. emotional thing for us. You need to have the food there. You don't know if you're going to use it. But you've still got a, f a cupboard full and yet you'll still probably sit there and go, I've got no food. I've got to go shopping. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a safety trigger and a safety, safety mechanism for us. So I always say your cupboards still need to always have food in them. But it's cool to detox yourself occasionally and clean those cupboards out and see what emotions come up for you when you do that. Like for me, it sometimes brings up money scarcity problems, which then like I realize if I don't have lots of food in my cupboard, I'm like, I'm poor. Now I feel poor. Now I feel scarce. Now I don't have enough clients. Now I don't have enough money. And it's really interesting to see what dynamic pops up for you when you pop yourself in a bit of a stressful situation. But it's very important for the diplomats and the guardians to make sure you've always got stuff in your cupboards, but make sure it's good choices. But For me, it's about, it's about uh, buying fresh. You know, I, I, I buy everything fresh and Saturday morning is the uh, Mercado. And, and if I have a full refrigerator on Friday, I still have to buy stuff on Saturday. Otherwise, it's the next Saturday before I get it. And mm. so I end up throwing a lot of food away. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, but I and do, do look at my list. freezer space? Not very much, not very much. And it's full, it's, uh, you know, it's full of the chicken and, and turkey and that kind of stuff. Um, no, I, don't, I don't have room for a big square thing of leftovers, you know, a soup or a, or a stew or something like that. I don't, 
I don't have room for two or three of those. I don't have room. Mm. What about putting them in smaller containers so you can pull them out one at a time? Well, I couldn't put very many. Couldn't put very many. Yeah. Well, so. it's always that thing. So it's, it's interesting because you, so Angela was brought into this company. Angela is actually a PH360 founding member. So Angela joined so many years ago that she was there when it first started. So she's been there through a few different things. And Angela came out as a diplomat at first, which was actually really relevant because she spent so many years being so high anxiety. She didn't need an element of the diplomat way to help her get to a certain point. But when the algorithm changes, she got brought across to an activator that you're now going through that process of becoming more activator like. Um, so there's still some diplomat tendencies there and we can read through your mind section and see there are still some statements that are very diplomat like and Ann Larson would have been done some of those with you where she said, you know, there's a bit of diplomat still there. So that need to yeah. still have a fridge full um, is very diplomat like, but I do know you could be very good at planning and, and doing the cooking and making sure you've got the food made up. Um, but I think it's just now going and making sure that you are buying things in smaller portions. So it's just a retraining of your habits to come across to that new way of, of being. Yeah. And so Katie yeah. and I were talking before about prepping and food prepping. Like I'm at the moment making some vegetable lasagnas with the lentils. Um, and I've also thrown, I had some two pork medallions. I don't eat pork very often. This is the first pork I've probably bought in two years. And so I've made an entire slow cooker with all my top vegetables and the pork and some smoked, what was it? Some smoked um, paprika and Moroccan spice and honey is really high for me. So I put that in there. So it's going to be like a sweet and sour with some apple cider vinegar with um, the pork. So that's going to be a really nice dish. So I've got a slow cooker. I've got the lasagna, which is just vegetables, lentils, and a vegetable white sauce. Um, and, and that's my food prep for the week. And I'll, I've got some vegetables there to make a salad and I've got more vegetables there to make some fruit smoothies. So, um, and that's my week plan. So I keep it simple, but I understand some of you that what would come up for you girls with prepping like that sort of way? Is there, is there something that gets in the way of that for you? Well, for me, question, I make a Shana. Say that again. Here you go. Oh, okay. Well, I make a soup every, every week and, um, and I have a slow cooker and, but if I've still got soup left, I don't want to make another stew or big pot thing, you know, um, because I don't have room. I just don't have room. And I'm, a, I'm an only, I, you know, I live alone. And, and so I, I, and what happens is I'll cook for four and then I'll eat the same thing for four days, um, which doesn't bother me as far as eating it. But it does bother me when, I, when it says you're only supposed to have chicken twice a week and I have it four days in a row because it's left over, you know, and I don't have room to freeze it. So, so what, what would it take for you to get a little chest freezer? I, I have looked into that. I don't have space for it and they don't sell the ones I want. In other places I've lived, I've had that mm -hmm. because I do love to cook, you know, and I do... Yeah, I love that. And I love to buy and, you know, big, big things. So then my question to you would be, if you know you're cooking for four and that four cooking for four is then the problem, it's then learning how do I then integrate into only cooking for two? Yeah, cook for two. And yeah. throw the food away. Then I end up throwing the fresh food away because it sits in the refrigerator. But then you could buy less of the fresh food. Um, difficult. Difficult. Is that because it comes in bunches? Yes, you buy, you know, I mean, you got to buy two things of romaine lettuce in one wrapper, you know, at the farmer's market. Um, when they bring the stuff in from the farms, they're, they're, they're all in big crates and they just hand <laughs> you, and you uh, bunches, you know. I mean, you, wanna, you want five radishes and you get 25. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, for so, you, I know that you as an activator, you're meant to be eating five small meals a day. So I would yeah. I would think about your food list and go, right, so then if that's the way, maybe I do a – have you – oh, no, you're not on social media. I will, I will download the videos of me using – making smoothies 
and I'll reload them into YouTube for you today. I'll write that down. Smoothie. That was no, my question, me. Shana. I want to know what preparation one can do for a smoothie because I know I could probably have a smoothie a day. Like that could be my breakfast. That's what I've been doing. Um, I've been loving that. And so I don't mind that. And I know it doesn't ultimately take too long, but what prep could I do? Like, could I just, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who gets a bit bored of the same flavour every day, but what well, I would preparation go along, can I do for a smoothie? Yeah, so I would go along and find your top five fruits and your top seven to six, six to seven vegetables. Um, I believe I did a post about smoothies and the ingredients that go in them, but I'll see if I can find it and I'll share it with you. And it was pretty well all the top fruits, all the top vegetables, and then you go into your top nuts and seeds and fats. And then I just say, make yep. sure you got those in the fridge. And then every night before you go to bed, if you're time poor in the morning, then do it at night time. But I would generally have the shake cup mm -hmm. and I put all my ingredients in so that I can just wake up in the morning, done and walk away. But it is super okay, important. Okay, I need to do that. Yeah, yeah, hugely. And it's super important for you to make sure you've got like blueberries, blackberries, whatever your berry is. Um, so if cacao is a yes, then I buy the cacao nibs. If sunflowers and sesame seeds are a yes, then I buy those too. And I make sure for an endomorph, you sprinkle those in once you've made it. So as soon as you finish blending it, open it, put some of the chunky things in there. That way when you're mouthing it down, because it's very easy for us to scull a smoothie, um, when you're, when you're drinking it, then if you've got chunks in there, you have to chew it. So you're still enjoying a smoothie, but you're getting the thing that force you to chew, which then brings your gut um, preparation up. So your body, your digestive enzymes are then flowing so that we're not smashing it with an entire smoothie and then ending up bloated and hungry 20 minutes later. So chewing through the smoothies is a really big thing that makes a big difference. Um, but, yeah, so I just always make sure I've got different things in there. Whether it's me going um, one day is pepitas, orange, cinnamon, spinach, and almond butter with some cacao powder, ooh, chocolate Jaffa smoothie. And then, you know, another day it might be pepitas, pumpkin, nutmeg, spinach, because it's always in there, spinach or kale. Um, and we've got, you know, suddenly I've got some leftover roasted pumpkin and roasted sweet potato from last night. I'll throw that in there as well so it becomes smooth and creamy awesome throw that one in there and then maybe when i'm finished doing that one i'll open it up and throw through some um cacao nibs and a, a dollop of coconut yogurt or coconut cream just to give it that creaminess like you can you can play with that so well in so many different variations mm. but you've got to have the basis like i've got in the fridge here i've got a big coal shopping bag full of all my my ingredients so in the morning, I do it in the morning. Usually, unless I've got an early start, I'll bring the whole bag inside and I go, yeah, what do I feel like making today? How am I going to play with this one today? You know? Um, and so I, I have a kit. A question. Does the temperature of the smoothie make a difference to your digestion? Big time. So big what time. are we aiming for? We're aiming for it to be at room temperature. So I make it in the morning and because it's in the fridge, I make it in the morning. I take it with me and I don't need to worry about refrigerating anything because I'm only, I'm going to eat it within the next two hours. So it can sit in my bag, even in the Queensland weather, and it'll still be fine for me to drink. And that's the best thing to do. Not have it freezing cold. Shanae can't, definitely can't have anything cold. You and I, we might like it to be cool, but it really is not beneficial to have anything freezing cold in our gut. And I will often, if I'm going to make a smoothie and I'm then eating it within the next 20 minutes and everything's out of the fridge, I'll actually grab hot water out of the kettle and put that into it so it brings it back to a neutral temperature. So that it's drinkable, what do you use? Um, um, because yogurt isn't drinkable. Yeah, I mean, oh. to make it... Once you blend it down with water, I make all my smoothies on water. I seldom oh, use... With water. Yeah, water. I seldom use a dairy because a dairy or a nut juice because um, it's just added calories. I mean, yes, we're having something that's food and we're we're eating it, but I sit there and I find our rely on, our our desire to rely on dairy as a liquid substance in our dishes. Like 
even with coffees and hot chocolates, I'm only going to make it now with like a long black. Imagine like everything being a long black with a dash of milk, a long black with a dash of milk, my smoothies and everything like that. If I want it to be creamy, the thing is if you're using spinach, sweet potato, avocado, hemp seeds, any of those things, they're going to make it creamy without it being creamy, right? And oh, the other one is um, uh, artichoke heart. If you use those ingredients in your smoothie, you will not know that there's no dairy in it. Same with like taking out a banana. Like if you don't add, banana's not good for any of us, except for Sinead, you may have it pop up on your list more frequently than we will. Um, and everyone's like, I can't have my smoothie without banana in it. And I was like, actually, if there's plenty of things, chia seeds, um, cook like all those things I said before, or chia seeds or, or flaxseed meal will give you the same consistency that banana does. And if you're using your right fruits and vegetables, it comes up perfect. Oh, pawpaw. Pawpaw is the other one that comes up as the same consistency. What is that? Ah, uh, papaya. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> So is there anything else that's coming up of question this week? Um, the girls here on, on in Australia, um, have you finished out week one? Are you looking at moving into week two yet? Yeah, so I've finished out all my week one stuff. So I'm looking into all my week two stuff. I'm getting my head around changing from sensor to a diplomat. Although I find my traits are more sensor-like than diplomat. So... So it means your body is formulating more diplomat pace. So it's more about time and space for everything, but you've still got the ectomorph traits in most of your other components. Yeah. Um, it's just showing that your body is going to need um, just more spatial awareness and more time for planning. Yeah. Which I'm not great with time for planning. I need to change that. Yeah. Yeah. Your biggest challenge at the moment is, is your scheduling and creating lists clear concise lists to tick your things off like i don't know if you're anything like me like last night um i had this full of receipts and i was like i had a list that was like i need to put my receipts in i need to do this and then every time i get there and cross something off it's like the biggest dopamine hit for me i'm such a nerd with lists i'm like yeah i've done that mm, that one's finished and that one's finished and i just get so excited about ticking things off but that's a little game that I've played with my little inner child because I was like, how can I know? I know that if I don't plan these things and get them done, I sit here in a state of overwhelm. It's like spinning plates. Like I'm, I'm running around in circles, winning at nothing. And that's the most frustrating, demoralizing feeling. So how can I make this fun? So then every time I get one of these, I was like, whoop. And I throw it like just everything I can do, even using post-it notes, as much as they ship me, I'll just do that. I need that one. Um, as much as it shits me to have um, post-it notes everywhere, it's also really thrilling to put everything on an individual post-it note. So when it's done, I grab it, scrunch it up and throw it in the bin because it gives me that little win. And that's what I have to do. Um, and I can share this freely with you guys and I'll share this with anyone I ever speak to. Um, and it may resonate with you a little bit. Um, and to know you probably know this about me. Back when I was younger, I had a severe drug problem. And the thing was, is it was this desire. I hated not, I hated sleeping. I felt like I could never achieve enough in my day. And sleeping was this annoying thing that apparently we had to do. And so I had this ectomorph, this is very ectomorphic, where I just wanted to be a superhuman. And so I was a high functioning drug addict. So in saying that, it got to a point where my brain chemicals stopped rebalancing. And I started falling into manic depression and manic anxiety because my, my chemicals in my brain couldn't bring me back up. So as I was coming out of each of the, each of the binges, I would have to sit there and write myself a list. And I'd literally say, right, what time am I waking up tomorrow? I'm waking up at 9.15. Okay, so 9.15, 9.20, I'm going to get up and I'm going to write down, brush my teeth. I'm going to write down 9... 9.30, I'm going to you know, have a shower. And I'd literally plan out every step of my day because I realized I was lacking the ability. The serotonin in my brain was so leached and I couldn't find a way of winning at life. So the only thing I could do was micromanage my day so that I could check off small things and win at that point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
Sometimes when you're in the thick of life being stressful, the, if the only thing I can win is going, I brush my teeth today, yes. <laughs> you know, that's the small win. Then that, that feeling then allows me to see other opportunities and see other abilities that I have. So it's just, just knowing that those small little wins make such a difference for you to then go, okay, that felt good. Where's the next good feeling doing that? Where's the next good feeling doing that? And it's, that's a big, big thing for us is remembering it's just following the next good feeling is all that matters. And the other thing that came up for me in that time, and a lot of you, Katie, definitely, Angela, definitely, Shanae, occasionally, would be remembering that your thoughts are not your own. When you are in a stressed state, you are not thinking your own thoughts. You are thinking about beliefs, conditioning, and everything that's been told upon you, forced upon you, given to you throughout your life that is showing up to prove you in what you're believing. So if you're believing that you're not productive, you're believing that you're too busy, if you're believing that you are stressed, if you're believing you're not a good mom, if you're believing any of that, everything will show up to prove you that thought. So when you're in the thick of it, remember, and this is what I had to do for three days after every one of my stupid binges, I had to sit there and go, what you're thinking is not your own thoughts. What you're feeling is not your own thoughts. What you're thinking and feeling is not you. You're just in a responsive state to the conditioning right now. And that was the only way I could get through my days. Does that resonate at all for anyone? Yeah, that's what we're working on with Anne is about limiting beliefs. Mm, yes. The limiting beliefs. One of my girlfriends calls them elves. They're evil <laughs> little fuckers of thoughts. <laughs> that's great. So I might even use that in the group. I might have to tag this, this post with the elves. I would love for you guys to sit down. Oh, I wasn't going to give homework, but this feels really, really good. Evil little fuckers. I would love for you to sit down and look at your day. <laughs> Katie, for you at the moment, I think this would be very profound. What are the evil little fuckers that you've got going on? Okay, that sounds good. And then I'd like you to write them. I literally want them written. You can type them or you can take a photo of your sheet of paper. Writing is better. Yeah, it is much better. You're connected to it. And then what I would like you to do, and you can take a photo or a video, um, you can do it in the kitchen in a pot, or you can do it outside. I want you to burn it. I want you to write down every evil little fucker, and then I want you to burn it and go, it's not mine anymore. It's not my thoughts. They're not my own. It's gone. Like, I cannot keep thinking these things. And it's actually a really weird ritual, but it totally works because you sit there and you watch it just go. And you realize suddenly that it's, these things have been controlling you for so long. And it's, it's get straight back into the Byron Katie work as well. It's like believing that you don't have enough time or believing that, um, Katie, I'm going to use this as an example, but it's not fully the same example for you. Believing that my partner doesn't support me or doesn't hear me or doesn't help me. Is that true? Well, yes, it is. Okay, how do you know that that's true? Well, because he does this, he does that. He doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, he doesn't do that. Okay. Is that, how do you know that that's true? Well, because he keeps doing these things. Great. So how do you respond when you're believing that? Well, I get pissed off and I get annoyed and I resent everything. And then, then my kids come in and then they're annoying me and I'm resenting them. And you see how it snowballs. So writing out your evil little fuckers is chasing out those little things and going, what are those things that trigger me? What are those things that put me in a bad mood and take me away from that next good feeling? Because the only way we get ourselves ahead is chasing the good feelings. And even if that's just brushing your damn teeth for the day, that's a win. Follow that. Wow, I love just channeling in. I don't like having anything structured for these calls. I love just channeling into whatever's coming up. <laughs> Something because I also realise that I have it too. I have an evil little fucker that I need to do. And I spent Friday night with one of my girlfriends who's a, a shaman and a love doctor and a guru. And she created this... So have you guys done like vision board? Shanae, have you ever done a vision board or heard of vision board work? Yeah. You've heard of it? I've heard of it, but I've never done one. I'm, I must not admit, I am very lazy. So I, I'm, yeah, I prefer to sit there and watch the telly than do Can it. Can we have that as homework as well? Can we have awesome. that as an, an activity for homework? Yes, yes. I'm going to make this do. Fun. Yeah, so either a vision board, Katie, I totally makes sense that you would be like, yeah, vision board. The connector in you is like, yeah, all the colours, all the things. It's 100% you, own that, love that. Shanae, you might like my version, which is the vision box. Okay. So this is because I find that if I see it, 
I go, well, you're not here now, are you? Where are you? Like, why can't I have you? I want that, but it's not my life right now. Here I am looking around my desk and there's shit everywhere, right? So what I like is I actually get my vision box and I have the things that I want. So for me, the partner who has the personal development, who has the beautiful body, who has the great personality, who knows how to cook, who looks after himself, who, you know, massages my feet and rubs my shoulders and blah, 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 blah. He's here. Let's put him in the box. Out of sight, out of mind. Because ultimately, sometimes, so Katie, for you, you might like the vision board because you see it constantly reminds you. But for me, I get the shits with it because I'm like, it's not my reality now. So I put it in the box. And then on the top of my box, it says, all that's in this box is done. So I can then set it and forget it because the universe will bring it to me, right? If you get into the woo-woo side of things, if I just put all this stuff in the box, I can then go about my day and know that I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in a good frame of mind of what I want. This is like if you sit there and go, I want red car, red car, red car, red car, you now see red cars everywhere. It's the same as this. If I just write it, set it and forget it, I know the universe has got my back. And ridiculously, since in the last two weeks, it's literally like that. I go, I really want that. Next minute, someone shows up with it. I really want this. Next minute, some guy's messaging me like, yay to life. Um, but you've got to be in that zone. So don't fixate on things, but create it, manifest it, let it go. Um, because it also takes it out of your head and frees up your brain space to be focusing on what's really going on right now. Oh, everything's fine. that's brilliant Shana I love that and I love it that um just on you having in your dream box what do you call that box um yeah dream box vision box vision box vision box that you've got the the partner that you want and it's so there waiting for you and it's coming your way for sure thank you I had a reading a little while ago and she's like yeah you're gonna be pregnant in 12 months and married and I was like Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of your relationship um, earlier today. We didn't talk about that. But I was thinking about you and how you made a massive transition. So all this new energy is good for manifesting good stuff. It really is. I feel like I'm in this zone where I'm like, I want this. A couple of tea shows up. I want that. Someone rings me. Hey, Shana, blah, 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 blah. Um, I sent out a birthday message to someone the other day and managed to find myself who's bringing about a whole lot of awareness of myself, Um, which is just, it's divine when you get into that space. So that's really what I want for you guys is it's very easy to be in our life and be like, yeah, I want to get healthy, but, and I want to get my life on track, but all this, this bad stuff's here, like the kids, the business, the work, the, all, it's always going to be there, but all you can really do is actually focus on the little tidbits of things that you can actually just be winning. The little check boxes, the little, um, Post-it notes that I can be throwing away. Great. Does anyone have anything else they want to share or anything else they feel they need to talk about today? Excellent. Thank you for sharing an hour of your public holiday ladies here in Australia. Angela, thank you for tuning in so last minute and contributing. I love this. And I also know that Angela, you love community and you love chatting. So I thought you might thoroughly love these calls. Yes, I do. Thank you so much. Excellent, excellent. Well, ladies, have a wonderful day. Uh, That sounds like some of you need to write a uh, shopping list and get some food prep happening or maybe actually even go through your cupboards and see what you you can concoct using up some of those ingredients that are just sitting in the cupboards. And if you need to, oh, oh, juicy. If you need to, take a photo of a bunch of ingredients. Go, Shana, I don't know how to use this. Do like a ready, steady cook with me or be like, I've got this, 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 this. What can I make with it? If, if you get, if you want to do that, I'm happy to play with that all the time. I love that sort of challenge. Okay. And you're going to send out a little video on smoothies, right? Yes. Yes. I'm going to grab the smoothies video and I'm going to download that and send it to you, Angela, via WhatsApp. Um, I'm going to do a post in the group about the elves. And Angela, once I've written the post, I will send that to you via WhatsApp. Muy bien. And I'll talk, bien. To you to, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. So. We're, we're talking oh. at 7 a.m. I'll just say bye. Love you loads. Got to go. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Oh, love you. Ciao, ciao, ciao.
Nice to meet you, ladies. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Yeah. Thank you for tuning in, Shanae. I know you're super busy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I had a ball. <laughs> now I'm going to go jump in the pool. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm going to take the dog for a walk in the heat. I find that if I actually go out and walk in the heat, it's not so hot. It's not that hot. You're fine. It's all Clint in your head. Kids, Clint and the kids are like hibernating in the house. Oh, yeah, but Clint's a bit of a pansy. He is. He got up and <laughs> he got up and mowed the lawn and did all this stuff this morning. Now he's like, it's too hot. And Kelsey's oh. out at the shops at the supermarket because she's staying in the air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, she's crazy. <laughs> I've actually got to call her tonight. I think I'm talking to her tonight after work, so. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. We need to book out a time for me seeing you on Monday as well, next Monday. Are we doing it Monday or when are we doing your hair, Monday or Tuesday? Oh, whichever one, I can make time. Okay. Um, I just got to steal a car to get out to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll talk to you about it anyway. I can do the hair on Tuesday, but we can meet up on Monday as well if you want. Yeah. I'm Maybe happy either whatever. way. Perfect. Whatever works best to not stress you out. No, the kids are at school. <laughs> <laughs> I have free time. The kids are at school. It's great. <laughs> Yay for school holidays being finished. Oh, yay for them both being at school this year. <laughs> uh, how old are they? I've got a five and a almost seven-year-old. Oh, my goodness. Full on. Busy, busy. Very busy. <laughs> so enjoying my first year of freedom from them both. I can't wait. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Such a blessing. Yeah. All right, I'll let you ladies go. Have a great night. Bye. Have a great night. Bye. Okay. And Sharna. Yep. Um, do I understand that you have split with your bow again? Yeah, we're fully split. Oh, we, um, we split up uh, three weeks ago now, but it was like we were on again, off again, and then it was um, through Christmas I realized that potentially um, I hadn't gone all in with him. And so I'll stop recording. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, stop recording. Receive an email notification. No, 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 no.